creative industries have emerged as one of the leading sectors in the economy. Starting up a small recording studio in my dad's garage is all it took. My story was more like experimenting with a variety of flavors, baking cupcakes, brownies, donuts. Breakthroughs are usually when you find a new way to do something. Oh well, me and my sister set up a fashion label because we just couldn't find what we wanted in shops. Breaking rules and great stories start with how you dare to do things differently. So, how do you start and sustain a business? All these and more as Africa's Global Bank, UBA, presents Mind Your Own Business, a radio program designed to initialize, educate, and motivate young entrepreneurs emerging as strong players in the local and global economy. Stay tuned for Mind Your Own Business. This is Mind Your Own Business, brought to you by UBA, Africa's Global Bank. Good morning. You're listening to Mind Your Own Business, brought to you by UBA, Africa's Global Bank. I'm Wale Famirawa. Thank you for joining us this morning. Of course, we continue to tell you the stories of entrepreneurs on our show. We're trying to inspire you to, and of course, give you the tools you need to do your business in Africa's largest economy, Nigeria. And on the show today, we have Mary Dinner, founder of JobLinks. She'll be telling us her story and helping us appreciate the importance of recruiting the right team. Thank you so much, uh, Mary, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank all you right. so much. All right. So let's first of all hear your story. So you started this company, JobLinks. What is it yeah. about and how did you get into it? Okay. So JobLink is uh, Nigeria's first job center. Uh, never before in the country have we had a physical building where anyone, regardless of your background, regardless of educational um, background, yeah. work experience, never before has there been a building where anybody can walk in and be given the same reception. We um, collect their resumes, we put it on our, our human resource development system, and then from there connect them to vacancies that we have from top companies in the country. Right, so yeah. essentially... The people that you are bring that come into your office, if you like, yeah. are people that are looking for jobs. So I imagine they don't really have much money. So where where does the money come from in, in terms of your business model? Um, the application to JobLink is entirely free right. of charge. We don't um, charge the candidates at all. In terms of the red revenue model, we decided to really focus on the impact of it. So it's a social enterprise. Yeah. We're not an NGO, so we are for profit, but we're in it for the long haul. Right. We believe in the next two or three or four years, we'll have lots of different ways to monetize the business. But for now, we're just focused on connecting as many people as possible to jobs. So what made you pick recruitment? I mean, it's not everyone that says, yeah. okay, I want to help people get jobs. They must have... Is there an experience that Absolutely. really catalyzed this for you? Yes, I mean, my background is hospitality, so I'm a hotelier. Right. Um, I have a master's in hotel management. I've worked with Four Seasons, um, mm. Marriott. I was heading marketing for the Starwood Hotels within Nigeria. So that's uh, all the Sheratons, all the Lemuridians, the Four Points. So my background is strongly hospitality. Mm. Um, and then I, I set up a hospitality consulting firm. So we're managing boutique hotels within Nigeria. And in that capacity, in that role, my, my job as you know, the owner of the management company is really to split my time between uh, making sure the quality of service is perfect, the food quality, um, managing the rooms, so many different aspects. But I spend all of my time in a boardroom interviewing people. Mm. And then I realized that there's a there's a problem here. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's a gap in the market. We need a more recruitment companies. And certainly the country needs job centers. Mm. And, and that was how the HR division of that company I then took out and reincorporated as JobLink. All right. So that was the light bulb moment, if you like. That was. But then the other thing for me as well is that coming um, up in the hospitality industry, it's, it's, it's not a very academic industry. So you could be the general manager of a hotel, you could be the vice president of Marriott for Europe, Africa, Middle East, mm. and not have a degree. Mm. So coming into Nigeria, and um, I moved back about five years ago from London, in my mind, I just felt like all of the people standing on the road, not doing anything, that don't have jobs, you know, they could be a fantastic receptionist. You know, somebody across the road could make a, a great, you know, uh, lobby boy. 
a great bellboy. Mm. There's so many things, you know, around the hotel and around other industries that you could do. You could work on a construction site um, and get paid, you know, 5,000 naira a day. And, you know, because it's with a, a top company, you have meals on duty, you have staff pick, pick you up, you have health benefits, and that's really life-changing. Mm. So I started thinking about it, that, you know, there has to be a way to get all of these people back into employment. And the key thing is not that everyone, you know, should be working in an oil and gas company or even an office job. It's my key thing is connecting the right person to the right job. So mm. suitability. Mm. And mm. we've been doing that in the past six months. We've connected 5,000 people mm. to top jobs. We have over 50,000 people registered with us. Right. But next year, we want to do even more. Right. Well, it sounds like it's working out gradually. Yeah. But um, in your view, what does it take to be an entrepreneur? And Because <laughs> you, you decided at some point to move out of paid employment yes. to do this. It's, yes. it's a whole new world, I imagine. So what, what do you think it takes to be successful? Um... To be successful in entrepreneurship, it's just having the will, mm. um, the determination that this is what you want to do, and having a good business plan. I studied entrepreneurship at Harvard, oh. um, and it was great because it was very practical. Right. We had to set up a real-life company during the course. We had to raise finance during the course. We had to write a business plan you know, during the course. And so by the end of the course, I had a, a business plan. Um, and contacts from where I could, you know, raise funding. You know, the idea was great. I had a lot of support. Um, but in the absence of that, it's really just knowing that this is what you want to do. Because even before I did the course, I was working with Marriott. Mm. And when I gave him my resignation le letter, they thought I was really crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was only about 23. And, you know, you have a great career here. You have a master's in retail management. You're on a fast track to general manager. Mm. You know, you're doing so well. You're so young. Why would you decide to resign and I just thought that there's just more right. so I think to be an entrepreneur first of all you have to be determined and you have to want more hmm. you you really have to want more and I think that that's always the key thing with me in every top role that I was in I wanted more right. and that was what drove me well okay we'll definitely hear more about your story but before we go into the break we always like our guest oh. to make a musical selection so what would you like to hear um I'm really liking the new Drake song at the moment. Mm. Uh, All right, so we'll you. come back after this break and continue our conversation with Mary Dina back in a moment. Thank you very much. Coming up on Mind Your Own Business. Um, some of my mentors in the hospitality industry, for example, general managers, they didn't have any degrees right. at the point where I was maybe 20 years old and already had a master's. Welcome back to Mind Your Own Business, brought to you by UBA Africa's Global Bank. I'm your host, Wally Farah, and staying with us today is Mary Dina. She's the founder of Job Links, and she's telling us her story. Thank you so much, Mary, for staying with us. Um, earlier, you touched on the fact that you went to Harvard, and yes. but interestingly, you are in the recruitment business. And just want to get your thoughts about the value of you know that type of education, because I imagine many of the people that come to JobLink didn't go to Harvard. So yes. you tell us about the value of that in the businesses that you, you help. To be honest with you, um, my my views are very um, maybe deb debatable mm. in terms of academia. Mm. I don't place such a strong emphasis on academia and academic background. Even though I have you know, a master's degree, postgraduate you know, um, education from Harvard, entrepreneurship and so on. But when I really look at the um, implication or the application of my degrees on what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Of yeah. course, it's great and it's useful, mm. but not in such a direct way that people think. I think the most important thing that I learned from school was um, use an initiative mm. to solve a problem. Mm. You know, so having a coursework and I have no idea how to do it. And then I sit down and I think, okay, what are the, what's the best way to do it? And also teamwork, all the group works that we did. So those sort of things are great, you know, from school and writing skills as well. You'd be surprised when people send emails, what it looks like. And, I, you know, I don't know if you need a <laughs> master's degree to send an email properly or to, to make sure that your I is capital as opposed right. to small, you right. know. So I think that um, education is absolutely critical. Um, I would say up till GCSE level. Mm. Beyond that, it's it's in terms of being an entrepreneur, it's more focus and it's more the, the will. I mean, I've heard people say that if they left school, so at about 16, 17 after the, their GCSEs and they started a company, they would be far 
ahead, mm. more ahead than Those where they are now. School, like, because if you're 30 and you started your business at 16, you have 14 years experience. Mm. And that's important. Mm. So, um, and I wouldn't employ one person over the other because the person has a degree. Yeah. Certainly. Um, some of my mentors in the hospitality industry, for example, general managers, they didn't have any degrees right. at the point where I was maybe 20 years old and already had a master's. Mm. Um, so I used to look up to them and think, I really want to be that guy. I want to be, you know, general manager right. of the Married Canary Wharf and heading all of these things. Mm. Uh, but it certainly wasn't about my academic background. It's just applying yourself, learning on the job. I would place hugely more emphasis on work experience than a degree. And yeah. every day, I believe that my company is in a position to also change the mindset in Nigeria and the overemphasis on academia. Mm. So I tell you know companies that if they tell me they're looking for a receptionist, we we'll ask them what are their requirements. They say you know de degree. I say um, do you really need a degree for this role? If you tell me that you do, fine. We'll make sure you, we find you somebody that has a degree. But think about whether it's really a prerequisite. Because when you look at the definition of prerequisite, and you say a receptionist has to have a degree, my question is why. You know, a receptionist has to be warm and friendly and mm -hmm. smiley. I don't think that, customer, you know, relations absolutely. Type and it's, skills. yeah, and it's intrinsic as well. You can build on it, you can train for it, yeah. but it's, you know, it's part of the person's uh, personality. So before you ask for an economic degree, you know, um, I don't know if Nash's theorem is important <laughs> for a receptionist. So those you. are some of the things they need to think about. All right, but let's bring it back to our focus today, the importance of recruiting the right people. And yes. I imagine that you've had that experience. You've helped quite a few companies get the right people. So yeah. give us a sense of, especially for those um, who are listening and you know have businesses and they're trying to recruit, the value of getting the right people. From your experience, what is it? I think that uh, it's absolutely key to get the right people um, and also to get them in a timely fashion. And that's why, you know, my company, JobLink, and other companies are essential because across the world, they monitor time to fill. It's a, it's a, it's a buzz phrase, you know, time to fill. How long does it take um, companies in the UK to fill a job? And I think in the UK, you're looking at about an average time to fill of 60 something days yeah. and every day they are trying to reduce it in the states is probably about the same now when we ask what is the time to fill in nigeria <laughs> you know <laughs> it, it's far more than 60 mm. something days mm. you know i have companies um big companies that tell me they've been trying to fill a role since february mm. and this is december and mm. they still haven't you know necessarily found the, the person that's the right fit so would you say that people good people are hard to find in nigeria well, I, I... Is that a tough question? That's a, that's a really tough question. I think there are lots of good people out there, yeah. but it's the connectivity. I think we need um, companies that can stay stand in that gap. Mm. So to answer your question, yes, they are hard to find because they may not have the exposure to these companies. They may not have the, the contacts. It's the same thing with government. Um you know, the presidents and governors, they find, they pick out of the people that they have, right. the people that have been recommended, which is great. But does everyone have a fair chance to be recommended? They obviously can't look at everyone's CV. Mm. So you need people in the, you know, in industries like my company and recruitment companies when it comes to private organizations to say, well, out of the 5,000 CVs I looked at, this is the best 10. Mm in any industry so that we know that you're actually you know finding the best people mm. but when there's a disjoint between the cvs that are received by the people um, making the decision and the, the labor market then of course it's going to be difficult to so find if, people if they are difficult to find does that mean the process is makes it makes finding those people more expensive when you do find them do you have to pay a premium how does it work out i think it's expensive more because of the time you know, yeah. the, the, the time value is so high. Um, when you think about the implications of not being able to fill a role, um, so that vacancy is extremely costly to the mm -hmm. company if it's a vacancy that you need. The 
additional stress and strain that it puts on the other members of the team that have to do additional work to cover for this role. Those are the things. And then the mistakes and errors and lack of productivity because you have a role that you need that you is not filled. All of those things make it expensive. All right, Mary, we want to get into another break and, of course, give you another opportunity to pick a, <laughs> a song that you like. Will you make it more local this time? What do you like? I love um, Olamide and oh. I love the song Shakiti Baba. All right, I'm sure we can bring that to you. We'll continue this conversation with Mary. Right after this break, you're listening to Mind Your Own Business brought to you by UBA. Welcome back. You're listening to Mind Your Own Business brought to you by UBA, Africa's Global Bank. Still with us today is Mary Dina, the founder of JobLink. Thank you so much, Mary, for staying with us. All right, Mary, let's talk a bit about, you know, the whole experience as an entrepreneur, because that's what this show is all about. We want to help people appreciate what it takes and the, the challenges that you face. So yeah. maybe you can tell us from your story how it all started, the challenges you've had to face. Um, I mean, running a company is um, is challenging. Um, one of the challenges, of course, I think that the biggest challenge that you face is making sure that you have a very strong team. Right. Um, and that's why the human resources aspect of any company is, is critical, especially in a startup. In the first year, things are going to change rapidly. Um, we always say that the business plan is obsolete at the printer. So the minute you print it out, it's already old. Mm. Um, so once you start, you started off with this idea, it's going to evolve based on the market, based on the opportunities. You might decide you want to do it this way. Another opportunity opens up. So you're going to be molding. Mm. As you're molding, you know, the people that you employed, you start to see, is there a fit? Is there no fit? With a new company, if you talk about fits, fits to what? It's a new company, so there's no precedence. Right. You know, so the company will start to mold and form in those formative years, and that's very challenging. Mm. I think as the, the head of the company, uh, as a managing director or the founder, you have to be able to manage that situation very well. Mm. Make sure you build your team very strongly. Make sure you manage um, the emotions of all of the team members and yours as well. Mm. I know uh, Warren Buffett says that for him, the most important thing um, in entrepreneurship is emotional stability. Um, and I, I think that that's so key. Mm. When you look at Nigeria, which is a wonderful country, yeah. um, but there are quite a number of things <laughs> that can get you <laughs> that emotionally might... <laughs> unstable, I imagine. Exactly. Right. So dealing with that mm. um, is what really separates uh, the weed from the ch chaff. I hear you. I hear you. But what about the value of mentorship? Um, yeah. When you start... You, you're going into this area that you've never been. Yes. You know, starting up a company. Yes. You're no longer an employee. You're now yeah. employing others. Yeah. I imagine that the transition may be tough. So what's the value of people that you speak to that yeah. tell you this is what you need to do? I think um, mentorship is huge. It's hugely important. Um, I certainly have a, a number of mentors that um, are impactful. That How I, often do you that touch I, base with your mentors? Um, once a month, once. A month. Well, I have I have <laughs> different levels of mentors. Right. I have some mentors that are maybe abroad. I have like lunches with them maybe once a quarter right. when I happen to be in the UK or I travel. I have mentors that I I talk to on the phone at least once a week. Mm. Um, so it really depends. And then I have mentors that I've maybe only had one meeting with. Mm. Um, I've met with Ali Kodangote and he's absolutely a mentor. Right. Um, but it's just the one meeting. So it Sounds more like an inspiration <laughs> than a mentor. Exactly. It's just one meeting. No, but you can but have a mentor valuable, that you read about. Some right. people have mentors that they study. Mm -hmm. You can have mentors that are dead. So their lives, their autobiographies. Exactly. You, you, you sift out so much. Yes, and you that. read about them. I know someone who is hugely successful in Nigeria, and his mentor is is not alive. Mm. Um, so there are just so many um, different levels that of mentorship. Quite interesting. A mentor is not alive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like uh, Onassis. Right. Um, I know that the, you know, Ernest is a, a strong mentor for someone mm. that owns one of the largest companies in Nigeria, and he watches movies about Onassis and reads his books, and you know, and that and that's uh, a mentorship, um, you know, personality for him. So there are different levels, but on of, on any level, um, having a mentor, somebody that inspires you, somebody that pushes you, uh, someone that drives you, um, you get up in the morning feeling like I want to be like that person, I want to be that successful, you know, um, but that's you, important. But do you ever get into those moments where you feel like, I can't go on anymore? Has that, yeah. have you hit that 
point? Well, or do you hit it regularly? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't hit it regularly, um, and and I don't. I don't think I, I hit that point at all. Mm. But I, there are challenges, right. you know, that that make you reconsider why. Am I you, doing all this? Exactly. Why you're doing everything you're doing? And for me, what gets me beyond those moments is. 100% the impact that we're making on the people. Right. For me, money so and need profit... To think beyond yourself. Absolutely. Because money and profit um, and revenue, it just, it wouldn't get me up in the morning. Mm. It's more a case of the people that I see every day, the faces of the people that are unemployed that I know I can help. All right. Before we let you go, you must give our listeners a tip. You know, you've experienced entrepreneurship. What's that one thing you like to say to someone who wants to be an entrepreneur or who is struggling as an entrepreneur? I would say that um, all of the experiences that you've had so far, mm. uh, including any academic background, any work experience, uh, anything you've learned, you know, even from mentors, take it as a torchlight um, and use it to pave your way through the tunnel every day. And I think that at the end of it, you know, you realize that all of those things that you learned, you know, is what takes you forward every day. Mm, That's my well. advice. Very, very well said. Thank you so much for coming in today. We've really enjoyed the time we've been speaking to Mary Dinner, the founder of JobLink. She's been giving us a very interesting perspective on being an entrepreneur in Nigeria. That's our show for this week. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week with a new program with a new guest. You're listening to Mind Your Own Business, brought to you by UBA, Africa's Global Bank. Creative industries have emerged as one of the leading sectors in the economy. Starting up a small recording studio in my dad's garage, it's all it took. My story was more like experimenting with a variety of flavors, baking cupcakes, brownies, donuts. Breakthroughs are usually when you find a new way to do something. Oh well, me and my sister set up a fashion label because we just couldn't find what we wanted in shops. Breaking rules and great stories start with how you dare to do things differently. So, how do you start and sustain a business? All these and more as Africa's Global Bank, UBA, presents Mind Your Own Business, a radio program designed to initialize, educate, and motivate young entrepreneurs emerging as strong players in the local and global economy. Stay tuned for Mind Your Own Business, proudly brought to you by UBA. Africa's Global Bank. Today's business tip from Mary Dina, the CEO of JobLink, is use experience gathered from formal education, past jobs, mentors, and so much more as a road path to success. For inquiries on Mind Your Own Business, please contact UBA Customer Fulfillment Center by calling these numbers 01-280-8822, 01-631-9822, and 0 700 Facebook.com forward slash UBA group, Twitter.com forward slash UBA group, live chat, www.ubagroup.com, and you can also email cfc at UBA group.com. Mind Your Own Business is brought to you by UBA, 